What up, everybody? Just picked up Violent Night on 4K. Um, I did watch this movie, I think it was last year, last Christmas, when this came out. And I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. And I completely forgot to even buy the DVD. And when I was out at the mall today, I just said, fucking bought it. And if you haven't seen my other video I posted, just grabbed a couple new 4K DVDs if you want to watch that quick video. But yeah, um... I'm just going to talk about the 4K disc itself quick. It's not the best 4K disc. Um, a lot of the movie does have some nice bright colors, but a lot of it, like the fight scenes, are kind of dark. But it does have HDR. Unfortunately, it doesn't have Dolby Vision, which I think this would have really benefited from, especially in those dark scenes. It would have added a bit more light. But whatever, it is what it is. It does have Dolby Atmos, the audio is crystal clear, um, really nice sound. And the movie does, other than the dark scenes, it does look really nice. There was something about it, I don't know what it was that was rubbing me a bit off. Um, it just, it doesn't have that 100% 4K sharpness like Joker and Gran Turismo. Some transfers are... They just turn out better. I don't know if it's the type of camera they're using. Um, but it's, don't get me wrong. It still looks good. Like, it's not a bad 4K disc. It's not like Terminator 2. It still does look like a 4K disc. But um, the image quality, I think, could be a bit sharper. Um, but yeah, uh, it comes with bonus features. Has deleted and extended scenes. Santa's Helpers, The Making of Violent Night. Deck the Halls of Brawls and feature commentary. Um, so yeah, that's basically what the the Blu-ray and the 4K come with. It's a really nice slip cover, obviously, with the DVD in here. Really nice case. Um, lots of colors. The movie is... I, I think it's a good movie. Um, I think I jumped the gun a bit the first time I watched it. Some movies I go back and watch like the second time and... They're sometimes better, they're sometimes worse. And with this one, the first time I had a huge blast and I gave it like a 10 out of 10. And then I watched it this time. I still had fun, but I didn't like it as much as the first time. Just because there's not really a story here. Um, sometimes when a movie has a story and you're re-watching it, you can kind of pick up on things that you missed before. This, it's... You know, it's really basic. It's really cookie cutter. The acting isn't the best with the villains. Um, obviously, David Harbour is the standout here with the acting. He does a really good job. But everyone else is kind of like BC list celebrities. And the first time I didn't mind that. I didn't mind like the cringy dialogue and just them not taking themselves seriously. I didn't mind that. But the second time I watched it, uh, I don't know. I think this is more of a movie to watch just when you're drunk with your friends. I mean, I put it on with my mom. I don't know if she liked it. She fell asleep, so I don't know. It is a stupid movie, but the kills are really good. That's really what this movie is like. has going for it. The character development with the little girl and David Harbour, Santa Claus, that is also a good part of the movie. Um, there is one part of that I, I really wish the ending scene showed like the parents reaction to when santa claus is flying away and you you would have realized that they realized oh shit sam's actually real that would have been cool but you don't really get that um you don't get like a lot of character development but you do get into like the relationship between the husband and the wife and they're split up and blah, blah, blah. And the kid wants them to get back together for her Christmas present. And she believes she's talking to Santa. And obviously the dad doesn't believe it. Like there's nice little um, Christmassy storytelling going on. That's pretty well done. Um, I don't care too much about the characters. But obviously I don't want like them to die. Like they didn't really do anything wrong. But yeah, it's just one of those movies where... It's kind of like John Wick. You don't really care about the side characters. You kind of just want to see David Harbour fucking everybody up. And you get that. Um, the kills are really good. I don't think they hold up as well the second time around. Just because 
you kind of already know what's going to happen. You know how the kills are going to play out. So that shock value is kind of gone. But like I said, if you're just looking for a good time on Christmas, this movie is the perfect movie for that. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It does have some good drama. And it does have um, some fairly good cringy moments that you can laugh at. And overall, other than David Harbour, the acting... The little girl did really good. She wasn't annoying. So other than those two, the acting was like a B or a C for me. The cinematography isn't anything like breathtaking, but it's good. The movie can be funny. So it's kind of an all-in-one package and you get bloody kills. So you can't really pass up on that. But it's just one of those like stupid movies that you see and you really like it. And then you kind of watch it a couple times more and you kind of just... I don't know, you kind of just get over it. But I'm kind of happy I do have in the collection. It's a nice, stupid, fun movie to have. Um, I'll definitely watch the second one because I know they're making that. This did really well at the box office. But yeah, all in all, I'll give the 4K DVD, you know, quality and all that. I'll give it a 7.5 or 8. Um, it's not, it, it's like basically almost a 10. But I think they kind of made a few more tweaks to make the image quality a bit sharper. Um, some things could have popped a bit more. And for the movie itself, I would give it like a 7 or an 8. Before, I gave it like a 10 out of 10. But I think over time, my mind is going to change, especially after rewatching it. Um, I think, like, I don't know. I was just like, just coming off the hype of the movie. And like, it's obviously not as good as I thought it was, like. The first time I watched it, I was like, oh, these characters are so developed. And then I watched it again. I'm like, not really. But at the same time, this this movie isn't about developing characters. So I shouldn't minus points from it for that. That's not really fair. So I'd stick with an 8. I think that's pretty reasonable. I do think the movie is a bit too long. It is two hours. I do think they could cut it, some of it out. The bank, like, not the bank. Them breaking into the vault, that was all cool and all but there's just some scenes in here they could have just not really taken out just make them a bit shorter we didn't need to so many like lines with fucking the main villain just being corny as fuck like i don't know we could have just moved on from that Sa shaved a couple of minutes off but at the same time you gotta have a corny villain so i guess it all works out on you know it depends on what you like if you want to see that corniness or you kind of just want to skip it and get to the action i really like the relationship between him and the girl like i said but um yeah i think what holds me back is the fucking acting and some of the dialogue other than that violent night is a great time picked up on 4k or blu-ray i haven't watched the blu-ray but uh i don't know how much difference it is in the 4k but that's basically the review Thank you everyone for watching and I'll have another Christmas review out for you guys tomorrow. Peace.